I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone, and I sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. Hey, sister, my grandma. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You were my shelter from the storm. When all my friends were gone, you were right there all along. I've never known a love like this before. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Wow. Wow. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you.
sister heart and amen hallelujah praise the lord everybody i love you more than anything i love my hands it, it's just it's a lot of things i love it's a lot of people i love but i'm sorry i love the lord more than that all that it, it's just i love him more than anything it's just nothing else Nothing else. That's right, Sister Montgomery. That's a beautiful song. So, yeah, I love him more than anything. Because he took the, hey, Brother Brown, he took, he took our time. God said, I love the people so much until I'm going to give my only son. And then the son says, you know what? Dad, I love them too. So let me give my life. And you're going to tell me that you kind of love him, you sort of love him. It depends on, no, uh-uh, we're not doing that. No, no, no. I love him more than anything. Because he chose to love me. He chose me. So what? Hmm. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. God bless you. I'm glad you could be a part of the Sunday School on tonight. Truly, we have another good lesson. And we're about to go into the, the spring quarter. Uh, so we're about to wrap up the winter quarter because you know the winter quarter is Dece December, January, February. So now March, April, May, that's coming up this spring quarter. So this is our last lesson. We've been talking about blessing, blessing, blessing. And tonight we're going to talk about blessing of spiritual fruit. Hmm. You know we have to say the uh, the fruits of the spirit. That ain't what the Bible said. The fruit. That fruit has nine slices. And you've got to have a whole fruit. You got to have all nine slices so you can have a fruit. It says, but the fruit, not fruits. Y'all, when y'all do the program, make sure you say fruit. It's not fruits. It's fruit. So, blessing of spiritual fruit. It's, it's fruits. No, it's fruit. Got all the slices. <laughs> All the slice, one fruit, and we're gonna be talking from uh, Galatians the fifth chapter, the eighteenth verse, and then we're gonna slide into the sixth chapter and end at the tenth verse. Okay, all right, Galatians five eighteen through six and ten. All right, all right, you welcome, Sister No. <laughs> I hear so many people do it. Fruits, of the, it's not fruits, people. We're going to hit the scripture tonight, so you're going to see it for yourself. Okay. It's not, I'm just, not just saying something to make me sound good. No. That's what the Bible says. It says fruit. Okay. All right. So let me pray, and then we're going to go into this lesson. Galatians 5, 18 through 6 and 10. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for this day, God. Thank you for how you've been with us all day long, how you woke us up this morning, carried us through our day. God, allowed us to come together one more time to read, discuss, listen to your word, God. We thank you for all that you've done, all you're going to do, and all that you, you are doing right now, God. We thank you for keeping us through the trials and through the struggles and how you've been by our side. And God, how you never walked away from us, God. A lot of times we walked away, but God, you were always there, God, and we thank you. God, we ask that you be with us on tonight as we study this lesson. Open up our hearts, minds, and understanding that we may receive your lesson and re apply your lesson in our lives so we will know how to act and we, as we follow the Spirit of God and how we use the fruit, how we, how we can become productive people, productive saints, productive men and women following your word. God, we thank you. I thank you for those that I can see, the ones I can't see, the ones that will be on later, God. I ask that you bless these our people who are here right now. God, bless them. God, you know what they need, you know what they desire, you know what they're going with, going through, you know what they're dealing with. God, be with them. God, strengthen them. Jesus, you know. You know each and every case, God. I don't, but I know that you are the God who can answer all and do all. God, as we go through this, as I teach this lesson on tonight, speak of these and declare the words that you would have me to say. Let it be all of you and none of me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be settled in our sight. My Lord, strength and redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, all right. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. You'd be surprised to know for it. I know you, you know, it's a small number here. But the on YouTube is it's so many. So like you say, wish more could hear, 
and you know when I, once I get to that YouTube crowd that's more than I'm reaching so I'm grateful but I, I know what you mean Sister Norfolk there's more people that need to hear the word of God but it's, it's getting out there I, I promise you it's getting out there because I'm getting a lot of feedback now they weren't getting a lot of feedback at first but I get a lot of feedback but I appreciate you appreciate all of you all okay let's go into this lesson Galatians 5.18 but if you be led of the spirit you are not under the law if you are led of the Spirit, you are not alone. You Now, you know the, the commandments and all that. If you are led of the Spirit, why do you have to be worried about the law? Because you're not going to do anything contrary to God's Word. Mm -hmm. You're not because you're going to be doing what God tells you to do. You're going to walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill all these fleshly situations, all these, all whatever's going out there. You see that? Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, what you say? See, 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 see no? It's, it's out there, right? It's out there. <laughs> so, it said, you are led of the Spirit. You got to let the Spirit lead you. But here's the other thing. You have to have the Spirit on the inside so the Spirit can lead you. He's not going to lead you on the outside. God can lead you on the outside, but the Spirit, it leads you on the inside. So you got to be led on the, he got to be in the inside so you can be led. You, when he talks to you and helps you out, you got to know what's going on. Hey, Dr. J. Hmm? So if you're led by the spirit, you won't have to worry about these other situations, the acts of the flesh and getting in trouble with the Lord and always be something, all oh, this and that and this and that, this and that and this and that. No, you don't have to worry about all that. Because why? You're being led by God. So if you're being led by God, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, married folks, having relations, and they're not married to each other. Fornication. Hey, Mama Rain. Fornication. Single folks having sex and not married. Uncleanness. That can go on to anything. Lasciviousness. Uncontrollable. They'll do any and everything with any and everybody. Idolatry, worshiping out of gods, witchcraft, that's no that voodoo, hoodoo, hatred, mm -hmm. variance, all kinds of emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, anything that's not like God, trying to start other doctrines, other something going against God. You want to go into mythology, you want to go into uh, uh, what's that, uh, Scientology, but you don't want to talk about God. You don't want all this other stuff, trying to cause division, mm -hmm. envyance. Murders, drunkenness, revelers, and such like. All of this stuff that's the flesh. It says, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things, hey, Sister Jefferson, do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me say that again. All that I just named. Okay, all that. It says, I have told you in time past that they which do these things shall not. Inherit the kingdom of God. There's some people saying, "Well, if you do a few of these things, you gonna get in heaven." If God kicks sin out of heaven, why are you gonna take it back? And if God kicked the devil out of heaven, why are you gonna take him back? I keep telling y'all, God will put sin out of heaven. He ain't taking it back. It ain't coming back anyway. It ain't no kind of... No. You do any of this adultery, you ain't doing... Uh -uh. Fornication, unclean, the sinfulness, adultery, witchcraft, all this, you will not go to heaven. Huh? It's right here. You shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you do this, hmm? these are acts of the flesh. You're pleasing your flesh. You're doing what feels good to you. Not fit what feels good to God. It's what feels good to you. Because if you're being led of the Spirit, you're not going to let these things enter. You're going to be like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. And folks think because they have a certain position, <laughs> hey, certain position in churches, that they can do what they want to do. Well, God is, you know, God, excuse me because I have a certain time. No, ma'am. It don't, I, I, I'm trying to tell you, I keep telling you all over and over again. I don't care what your title is. You are not going to be called by your title when the judgment, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to be said servant. It's either going to be said, well done, thy good and faithful servant. 
or it's going to be said, thou wicked and slothful servant. <laughs> so either way, you're going to be called a servant. But which servant would you be called? Because you, you said, well done, then come on up. Thou wicked and slothful? Uh-uh. We don't do wicked, we don't do slothful. It's not going to be in hell. Ain't nobody in heaven lazy. Oh, my God, today. Oh, my God, today. Ain't nobody sitting down in heaven. Huh? What? And sorry, excuse me. Ain't nobody active in hell. Let me, let me, let me put like this. Everybody that went on to be the, on, went on the glory, they not looking down. I'm sorry. I'm here finna hurt your feelings. They not looking down. They chilling in the cut waiting on the trumpet. If they was looking down, if they sitting up there talking to Jesus and having a conversation and partying going on, how they gonna how they gonna hear the trumpet? What's the purpose of the trumpet? I wait. If they gonna be doing all that, what's the purpose of the dead in Christ shall rise first? I wait. So you got to hear what the word says. It says, but if you doing all this stuff. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. So there's got to be well done, a wicked and slow. Buy them hand and feet and cast them into outer dogs. I don't want no part of it. If he, put, if he kicked the devil out, the devil is kicked out. He not coming back. He not coming back, you know. He not, he, he not coming. All right, all right, so Jeff. He not coming back for that. Uh-huh. And so it's just, it's, he coming back for those that who were, Walking in the spirit. Okay. But it says. But the fruit of the spirit. See that 22nd verse. But the fruit. Fruit. Of the spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering. Gentleness. Goodness. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such there is no law. Love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temper. Against such there is no law. When you when you follow all this, when you have all this, see that's why I say fruit. See, people want to separate these. That's why they say fruits. Cause if I if I show long suffering, I ain't got to be gentle. If I have faith, I ain't got to be meek. If I got tempers, I don't have to have joy. No, no, no. That's why I say fruit. You got to have all these slices. To have this fruit. Have the fruit of the spirit. It's got to be love. And you see what's at the beginning of, of the list. Love. When you have. When you start off with love. Everything else falls in line. I didn't. Uh, I'm not talking about this temporary. Off, off the beaten path love. What you think you love. Love. Puppy love. And byproduct love. And. I guess I love you too. You say something I don't like. No, I'm talking about agape love. Unconditional love. That's the love I'm talking about. That's the kind of love. When he said the fruit of the spirit. If you have the fruit of God's spirit. Maybe we need to say it like that. We, 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 we get too loose when we talk about the fruit of the spirit. Fruit of God's spirit. The spirit that that's, this spirit belongs to God. So in order to have his fruit. Then you, it starts with love. And if you have love. Joy is coming up. And then you had that joy, then you ought to have peace. And then if you had that peace, that ought to make you long suffering. And then if you long suffering, you ought to be gentle with it. And if you gentle with it, you ought to be good with it. And if you good with it, you will have some faith, baby. And if you have some faith, you will meek with it. And if you have, if you meek with it, baby, you got self control. Y'all better come on up in here tonight. Ah, uh, the blessing of the spiritual fruit. And if you act good, you have all these good attributes and all these slashes. Against us, there's no law. They can't put you in jail for being showing love. Hey, my God, today. They can't put you in jail for joy. Can't put you in jail for peace. They can't lock you up alone. So sometimes they do, but you know, they, they it, it'd be wrong. It won't be a, a permanent locked up. But see, adultery, you can get us some trouble. Woo-hoo. Fornication, you messing with the wrong, you can get us some trouble. Uncleanness, oh, my God. You can end up with stuff. Oh, my God. Lasciviousness, you might catch some. Uh-huh. Idolatry. Uh oh, oh you in trouble, with God, worshiping somebody. Witchcraft, try to put a spell on somebody. What you doing? Hatred. Oh my God. Various don't want just all kind of stuff. Just into everything. Emulations. 
going big, running up behind folks and trying to be just like them. That's my role, ma. And they ain't got no God. Come on, quit that rap. I'm always mad. The strike trying to cause problems. Seditious and the heresy. Always trying to start something new. Because you need some attention. Envyance, murders, drunkenness, reverence. Always acting a fool in a chance you get. And you think that's cute. It's not. God don't act a fool. Why do you? The only one I know act a fool is the devil. So I guess that's your daddy, right? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go on back to the list. And these that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If you say you belong to Christ, why are you still walking in this stuff up here? The adultery for the cave. Why are you still there? Well, uh, see, I, you know, I can't, you, know, you, you can't get rid of all this overnight, right? You might not be able to get rid of all, but what are you trying, what are you doing to get rid of? And when you really make up your mind, say, Lord, I'm tired of all this. Lord, this stuff I'm doing, it ain't about that. Lord, I knew when you make up your mind, God will take it. it got to snatch that stuff out of you. But see, you ain't made up your mind. You gave the preacher your hand, but God ain't got your heart yet. Uh-oh. Mm, my Lord. And then you make the preacher lie. You gave God me, give, give me your hand and give God your heart. You do an amen and you know God ain't got your heart. <laughs> Jay still got your heart. Lee Lee still got your heart, baby. Them folks around the corner still got your heart. Give God your whole heart. And if you're a Christ, you crucified the flesh. All that stuff you want to do, you it's, it's dead because God, you said, God, I want to serve you. I want to serve you wholeheartedly. If I look like I'm going to fix me, catch me, make me over, break me down, whatever you got to do, God. I want to be who you need me to be. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. We got to live in the spirit. We got to walk in the spirit. See, sometimes we living in the spirit and not walking in it. You say, how I do that? You can live in the spirit. You can act like you. You know, you, you're living in the spirit when you're at church. But if you are not walking in it, it won't keep following you. See, when you walk in the Spirit and live in the Spirit, then it's a part of your everyday regimen. Every day you get up and you brush your teeth. Every day you get up, you wash your face. Every day you get up, you take a bath. So uh, you can't make God part of your regimen that every day you decide, I'm going to live in Him. I'm going to walk in Him. Because if you make your mind, you don't make up your mind, the devil gonna help you make a choice. Well, it's okay one time. How many y'all how many times have you said it's just one time? One time won't hurt. Just a little bit won't hurt. That one time could be your last time. So you need to live in the spirit. And if you say you in the spirit, you live in the spirit, then you need to walk in the spirit. So when you walk in the spirit, everybody else can see that you're walking therein. Because you're not acting like them. You're not doing like them. And you're not responding like them. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Hmm? What? Let us not be desirous of vain. You want to be, it. every time you turn around, you want everybody to see you. When we going to see the Lord? Oh, the Lord is right here, but I need y'all to look at me. You always want people to talk about you. You always want to say good things about you. You always want to be out front. You always want... Well, who getting the glow? That's vain. Because if you're trying to take God's glory, you're doing stuff in the church, and you want people to say, you, you, oh, he doing, oh, he doing the work for the Lord. No, he doing the work for you. Because you talking about, okay, God, you 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 know we can do something you do, do, do. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. Wash my girl. Hmm? So it's no for years. So you got to understand that when you in the church, you get to know that it's all about God. When you outside the church, it's all about God, all about God. It ain't about you. I done told you. The same God that gave you breath can take it. The same God that gave you the your heartbeat can take it.
provoking one another. Why why you wanna why you try to make folks mad in the church? Why you wanna? And say folks that always got something to say, they try to provoke you, try to make you mad and looking at each other, looking crazy, and you can't stand this person because they got a car and you want to have a car and you do. Well, you got to understand what they went through to get the car. What they did to get the car. Now, some people take steps to get something. And it's like, well, it looks like she just got that overnight. And this happened in the overnight. And the overnight. Well, you got to say, okay, God, am I blocking my blessing? God, I need a car. God, what can I do to get a car? And then you need to go follow the steps. Sometimes people get blessed, and sometimes you got to follow the steps. Because everybody just don't get blessed like, whoop. God says, okay, I want you to go through the process. You can be on the job for a number of years, and you do a little car shopping. And say, okay, what can I afford? Or, what can I get? Okay, what is my credit score? Y'all, uh, mm-hmm. Work on that. And then you build all that, and then God take you through the process. Then when you get out everything else straight, God say, here you go. But you've got to go through the process. Don't be envying nobody. Say, God, you bless my sister. I know I'm next. Oh, Lord, you bless my brother. I know I'm next. Always say, thank God. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Rejoice when your brother and sister get blessed. Mm. Wonder what they did to get. Don't do that. You blocking your own. You blocking your own blessing. All right, brother Brad. Brethren, if a man we're going to the sixth chapter. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one <clears throat> in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now you see your brother, your sister doing something they don't have no business doing. And if you're strong enough to approach them, do so. And if you're strong enough to approach them, approach them in the spirit of meekness. You can, uh-huh, see that? No, uh-huh, I see you, I see No, ma'am. No, sir. No, sir. Mm-mm. Brothers, sisters, come on and talk to you. What you. What's going on? You know that's not how we behave. That's, that's not a good look. What would God say if he saw you? What? How would you feel? God, that's not that. We shouldn't be doing nothing like that. That's not good. That will bring a bad reputation on you. That will mess up your reputation. That will mess up your reputation with God. And oh my God, that'll be a reflection on the church. Hey, Nikki. That's how you do respond in the spirit of meekness and considering yourself. Like I say, if you ain't strong enough, when you see them overtaking in the fall, you you ain't been delivered yet. Maybe you need to tell you know strong but spiritual person or the pastor about what you saw and let them handle it, and, and you know you be a witness. But you might not be able to handle it because if you're in a situation and you ain't been delivered, you might slide up to you be trying to help them. You sliding up in there, you like, ugh. Oh, oh, that's all right, right? Mm-hmm. But make sure when you go to, when you approach somebody, you know, when you just got delivered, don't be trying to run back up in there and talk to folks. You got delivered from smoking weed, I wouldn't advise you to go back around the, the blunts. Because you might get tempted. Because you just left that area. If you were an alcoholic, I would advise you to go to no parties. And trying to preach the word. And they got all the alcohol there. And you ain't got the scent out your, you ain't got the scent out your nose yet. Make sure that you build yourself up and you're strong enough to go back out there to face the things that you once were a part of. You done left that man out there and you trying to <laughs> you trying to witness to him and he looking good and he smelling good and you forget did you forget you supposed to be talking about Jesus because you like why I left this man? He looks so good. I left it. What did I walk over? Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Help your birth help your brother bear his burden. Don't bear the burden. Help him bear it. 
You know, you like you there to help him through. You help you there to pray her through. You help that you there to help her carry. But don't be don't be putting folks burdens on you and holding those burdens on you all time for be like. And why you like, Oh Lord, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, I'm just uh, that's oh my goodness. And that's what happens to pastors so many times that when they get burnt out because they trying to carry everybody's burdens. It's like, okay, when you going to carry your own burden? It's, it ain't nothing wrong with carrying your own burden. And ain't no, ain't no problem with you sharing it with somebody. But when you want to dump your burden on other folks, that, what's, what you going to carry? What you going to pray to God? What, what you going to have God to help you with? We're here for one another. But you can't dump all your burdens on somebody. Because you don't know what else they got. So we're here to help each other out. We're here to walk with each other. We're here to pray with each other. But don't just dump your stuff on folks and run away. Tell them what's going on. And see how can, how can they pray with you. How can they help you. Okay? For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. We got a lot of people thinking they something and they nothing. We have a lot of nothings running around thinking they something. We got a lot of empty people thinking they full. Well, they are full, but it ain't good. <laughs> mm, okay. So don't be thinking you all that when you're not. Say, God, I thank you for who I am. God, I thank you because you made me who I am. Hey, Evangelist Jackson, good to see you, darling. Mm -hmm. He said, but let every man prove his own work. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Let every man prove his own work. See, I cannot take credit for what you do. And you can't take credit for what I do. I have to have credit for what I do and you get credit for what you do. Let every man prove his own work. And so when you do work, hey, Sister Saint, when you do work, you should be able to prove that you did it. Uh-oh. Because so many people like to present work, but it's not their work. Uh oh Ooh, my God, today. See what I did, but you didn't do it. They did it, but you're trying to take credit for what they did. So when I ask you to prove that you did this, you can't prove it because it's their work. Uh-oh. You did, hey, hey Mika. <clears throat> it said, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. You, when you make, when you accomplish something, you happy. <laughs> oh, I did it! Ooh, ooh. And you say, but how can you be excited? And say, oh, I did it. I oh, did well. I didn't really do it. So. Okay, they did that. Oh, uh, so, we, mm. but I'm t taking credit for what somebody else did. But you can't do that. But I'm so glad that God didn't like that. Because when he calls, when you come before him, he's going to read your record. He's not going to say, well, I know what your name is, but I'm going to read Pastor Van's record. Nope. He's going to read your record. Thank the Lord. And here it is what I just said. For every man shall bear his own burden. You got to bear your own burden. Like I say, we can help each other. We can pray with each other. We can help each other. We strengthen each other. But you still got to carry your own burden. But it's made easier when you have Christ on your side. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. We ought to be willing to love on people that teach us the word. We ought to do a little something every now and then. This, if it's not no more than an encouraging word. Send them a couple of dollars. Send them a gift. Tell them thank you. Tell them I appreciate you. Tell them you helping me. When you see people who are helping and, and giving you the word of God, give them some love. However you want to do that. Give them some love. Show them that you appreciate them. Teachers, we want to hear thank you. We want to hear God bless you. We want to go shopping. I'm just saying. <laughs> but you want to communicate in all good things. You want to bless them in some type of way to let them know thank you. I appreciate you. 
But you want to communicate. Let him that is taught in the word. <clears throat> communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God is not deceived. God is not mocked. Don't be deceived. Whatsoever. Whatever you sow. Whatever you sow. And I tell people all the time, when you bless the man and woman of God, you will receive a prophet's reward. Do you know what that is? It didn't say that you'll be blessed. You bless the man and woman of God, you'll be blessed. Mm -mm. It said you receive a prophet's reward. You bless the preacher, but you give it the you get a blessing of a preacher. You get a bit what really? That happens. So when you blessing a man and woman of God, it comes back at you. But whatever so, if you sow in them discord and heartache, you're gonna get some discord and heartache. If you sow in love, you're gonna get love. You sow foolishness, you're gonna get foolishness. Don't be thinking you're going to plant love and get, you're going to plant hate and get love back. That ain't going to happen. You plant gossip, but you're going to get love. Mm -mm. Whatever you plant, that's what's coming up again. Whatever you put in the ground, whatever you nurture, that's what's coming up again. So whatever a man sow that shall he also reap. For he that sow to his flesh, so that the flesh reap corruption. But he that sow to the spirit, Shell, the shell of the spirit reap life, life everlasting. You keep doing these first things I name: adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envious murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. That's you gonna reap corruption. You going with with your other dad, with Big Papa, known to say, that's where you going You do all this other flesh and stuff. But he that sowed to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. You feed your Spirit. You do what the Spirit of God tells you. You act in, this, in the fruit of the Spirit. You have all nine slices. Then you're going to reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Don't, don't, don't stop doing good. Folks ain't going to love you for it. Everybody ain't going to love you. Everybody ain't going to like you. Everybody ain't going to want to be around you. But you got to keep on doing good because it, it ain't about them. It's the way God is saying, my child, look at my child. My child working. You won't always get a thank you. You won't always be rewarded. But you got to understand God has ways of rewarding those. And you wonder why. <clears throat> That mother always working. That person always working. And they always blessed. You don't never see them down. You don't never see this going on. You don't never see them this. You don't never, why? Because God rewards them. God blesses them. So you got to understand that if you keep on pushing and don't look for accolades all the time. I know we always want to say thank you. God bless you. We appreciate you. But you're not going to get it all the time. And you got to know that you got to keep that focus and say, God, I'm working for you. I'm doing this in your name. If nobody wants to appreciate me, okay. But God, I'm doing this in your name. It said, For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Let us do good to all men. But you want to take care of the people in the church first. You know, we always want to do outreach. But what's going on in the end reach? Somebody in the congregation might need food. But you trying to bless somebody out there for the recognition. Somebody in your in your in your church home needs some clothes for the children. But you trying to out here and bless the other folks. It said especially, let us do good to all men, especially unto those who are the household of faith. Take care of your local first, local people. What does that say? It say, charity begins at home. That's a church too. Charity begins at home. Take care of your folk. And then your folks won't have no problem going out heaven. Oh. <clears throat> Sometimes we want our folks to help other folks. And you ain't helping our folks. And then you get upset. Because they don't want to help you. Because you don't want to help them. Uh oh. Ooh. Mm. But if you help your folks. And then your folks get up 
And then your folks will be happy to help you help somebody else because they remembered you helped them. <clears throat> but if your folks don't want to help all the folks, you got to look at the situation. Did I help them? Are we helping them when they, when they needed help? Did, am I looking around to see who needs help? Or am I constantly trying to ask folks for stuff? You, you, you get, you get, you get, you get. They want everybody else to give. But what are you giving to them? What is their financial situation? How their bills looking? But you let somebody come off the street. I need you to pay my electric bill. You are in a But the sister that's been with you for five years, she need a bill paid. Help the house first. And then you go out. Help the house. And then go out. In reach. So you can outreach. <clears throat> Blessing of the spiritual fruit. Let's do the practical point. We are protected <clears throat> from the work of the flesh if we allow ourselves to be led by the spirit. We are protected from the works of the flesh if we allow ourselves to be led by the spirit. If we are led by the spirit, we don't have, to, we, we don't have room. For acts of flesh. Because the spirit won't even let the flesh get in there. It's like. Whoop. 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 And you just think you just going on through your day. And you just going on in the Lord. And you just. Ah oh, yeah. You having a good time. And you dodging this. And you dodging that. You not getting into this. You not getting into that. The spirit just blocking. Because you walking in the spirit. So when you walk in the spirit, none of these things will come at you. But if you try to slide it, I don't need to be the spirit today. I don't need to be. You're allowing the flesh to come in. I want God to catch me in the spirit. I don't ever want him to catch me in the flesh. Hmm. Only the Holy Spirit can produce his godly virtues in our lives. What? Only the Holy Spirit. What I say? Fruit of the spirit. You got to have the fruit of the Spirit to be functional in the holiness of God. You have to have the fruit of the Spirit to be able to function in the holiness of God. It took Christ's crucifixion to break sin's grip. Mm -hmm. When he shed his blood for us. That loosen the grip of sin. The veil in the temple rent. We can go straight to God now. And whatever we got, we can give it all to him. So the sin don't have no hold on us because we got the spirit on the inside. Spirit that lives on the inside. That, that's if it is in there. You know, some people try to make, it automatic got the spirit. Oh, automatic got the spirit, but you acting all kind of ways, doing whatever. Nope, that's not the spirit living in that side if you're still doing what you're doing for. Because spirit will subject you, make you subject to the spirit. You say, Lord, come in and live in me and, and guide me, lead me and guide me where I need to go. That's what the spirit does on the inside. Those in the body of Christ must minister selflessly to one another. Yes. Get yourself out the way. Minister to your brothers and sisters. Whatever their needs are, be there. Talk to them. Talk with them. Pray with them. Pray with I need you. I need you to pray for me. Okay. And you walk up. No. Why you can't pray right then? They might need it right now. Pray. They might not know how to ask you to pray right then. They might just in general. Pray for me. Pastor, I need prayer. Like I had one young lady come to my office. She said, Pastor, I didn't raise my hand, but I need you to pray for me. I stopped right there and prayed for her. Well, like I said, okay, I'll pray for you, baby. Go on, but she need prayer now. Not next week. Not when next one to see. No. Pray right there. So we got to be willing to be sensitive to the spirit, to be selfless. That when others ask for our time, we have it to give. Help is better received when delivered with love. Oh my God. We should always act in humility. Help is received. I think somebody said that. Help is received better when delivered with love. When you give me, when you help me in love, 
it makes the difference in the world. When I know you love me, you come and show. But when I you help you trying to help me so you can be seen. You want somebody to talk about you? You see what she did? Yeah. <laughs> and then we try to try to act humble. And you we you just want somebody to talk about. It. No, no, no. Whatever you do, it should be in humility. It should be humble. We are we are all of the same race and should not compete with but help one another to the finish. You heard that? We are all in the same race and we should not compete with but help one another to the finish. Why are we always trying to compete with somebody? This is not a competition. If you can preach, preach. Why are you trying to out-preach somebody else? Why are you trying to out-sing somebody else? Why are you trying to outdo somebody else? If you're trying to do better than somebody else, you in the wrong, you in the wrong field. You wasted your time. Because God has already written you off. So you need to bring yourself back in and say, uh-oh, wait a minute, this ain't about me. This is about God. And act like you have God on the inside. You got to work in this race. Because look, look, look. I look at some of these races, some of these marathons. <clears throat> and these people have, you know, they've been running so long. Their bodies are get, have given out. They're tired. They, the muscles won't go no further. They can't stand. And then there comes another runner who got their full strength, full stride. And they look at that person and say, wait a minute. We all in this race together. And they will stop their process of, they, got, they stop their going on it. And they will stop and pick up that other person. And they'll try. Or right, walk real fast, right along with the one that could make it. Just so they can make it to the finish line. It doesn't matter who finishes first. As long as we cross. You should be trying to outrun folk. When that one is at falling by the wayside. Why you can't go back and pick him up? We still going to finish the race. What you trying to win? What, what is the prize? Because a lot of people go miss it trying to get to the finish line. And all they're going to do is just finish. Mm. But we want to win that prize, that ultimate prize. That crown of glory. Mm. So the blessing of the fruit, of the spiritual fruit, we need to have that fruit in our life. You need to live in the spirit. So you won't be bothered with the flesh. You won't be trying to figure out, should I do this or should I do that? Will I go over here? Will I go over here? No, be led to the Spirit. Say, Spirit of God living in me, God. I want your Holy Ghost in living in me. I want to be guided. I want to be directed. Hmm? Oh, so it's not for you just said something like that. Don't let your running be in vain. Doing a whole lot of stuff. Acting like you say, acting like you in church, but you're doing all everything you anything for. Mm -hmm. But don't let your labor, don't let your running, don't let your work be in vain. Give God the glory. He's due the glory. He's due the honor. He gets the glory out of your life. Can he get the glory out of your life? Can he get the glory out of what you're doing? Is he pleased? Do you make him smile? Do you make him say, I want God to smile. When he sees what I'm doing, I want him to smile. When he sees what I'm doing, I want him to be happy. I want him to say, this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye her. God is my all in all. <laughs> Thank you, God, for your spirit. Thank you for living on the inside. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. Do what God tells you to do. The world may be against you. But you have only one to please. That's God. You may lose some friends. You may lose some family. 
But I want to make it to heaven where I can enjoy God all the time. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you, Dr. James, Sister Singleton, Sister Snowfall, all of y'all tonight. Thank you. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. I'll see you Sunday at 5 o'clock. For those of you who will be with me, Benita Vance Ministries, and you all, I'll see you back here next Tuesday for Sunday School Live. God keep you is my prayer. Pray for me, and I will pray for you. Amen. All right. God bless you, Sister Montgomery. Love you.